So let's talk about the Desjardins uh, compromise and ask some really hard questions. So let's hack at it. Okay, so let's talk about Desjardins and the, the, the breach that they just experienced. Uh, 2.7 million to 2.9 million people were compromised uh, in this breach, depending on the article that you read, uh, which news source. Uh, but what's happened is, if you haven't been reading, was uh, looked like an internal ploy, uh, downloaded or exported a whole bunch of client information, uh, be it... PII information, financial information, uh, also uh, companies that were working with Desjardins, they, he, they, I don't know if it's a he or she, got access to that information as well. So kind of right across the, the board. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is, you know, who should be accountable? And this is kind of the question I have for you, right? Who do you think should be accountable for this, All right? So you look at this compromise and you kind of go, okay, what, what really happened? And then now you have to look at, okay, so who should be held accountable? Like who should be the one that is criminally charged, right? Is financially has to reimburse these people, you know, kind of looking at the full scale of that. Is it Desjardins? Is it actually the employee? Did Desjardins have the right systems in place to be able to prevent this, right? I mean, well, you, you, they probably had security measures on that, but was the data encrypted? Did they have some sort of monitoring tool to be able to monitor uh, malicious behavior of downloads? Was this guy, this over months? You know, this guy do this in a weekend or this person do it in a, over a weekend or did they do it over uh, months and months of, you know, exporting a little bit of data at a time, right? And, you know, was there any tools in place to be able to monitor that, to be able to see, you know, this data being downloaded and over time and distance. So a lot of things kind of want, we want to think about, right? And comment below, I'd love to hear what you think about that as well, right? Love to hear, you know, what do you think of the Desjardins compromise? What do you think who should be held accountable? And what do you think should be put in place in these systems? My opinion is, is that, yes, Desjardins should be held accountable because I know for me as a client, not of Desjardins, but of, you know, different companies, my expectation is that they're securing my data. You know, if I fill out information, give them personal identifiable information, and, you know, financial information, social insurance or secure or social insurance, depending on where you are in North America, you know, date of birth, all that. I want to know that that's secure and that's safe, that they're not, it can't be breached and then sent on the dark web and then used for malicious intent. And, that, and what that could be is someone creating an identity, someone getting a loan out of my name, uh, someone getting financing, uh, identity fraud, like whatever that may be. It's just some of these areas that, you know, we really don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis because from what I'm finding, it's kind of, it's them, not me. I don't have to be concerned about this. And I don't, I want to be very clear, not worried. I'm not trying to put you in a fear state. I'm trying to give you empowerment so that you can kind of go and ask the companies that you work with, are you protecting my data? Are you encrypting it? You know, are you doing the, your due diligence to make sure that you're doing pen tests and vulnerability assessment that these breaches can't happen? You know, what happens if an employee does it? Do you hold them accountable? Do you hold them elite? Like, do you get the, the police involved and hold them legally accountable right, for cyber crimes? You know, what is that? So it's really important for us as users to do that. And then for myself, like I said, going out and talking to different, you know, people of IT through cybersecurity to, you know, management and above, you really kind of see that they're, you know, these guys are really trying to do their due diligence, but there's a lot of challenges. One is technology. Technology is always changing, always evolving. So for them to patch it, to harden it, to keep up to date, and then to pen test and vulnerability, it takes time, right? It takes time and resources. So these guys are doing their due diligence being able to do that. But the challenge is, is that, having the time and the resources available to do that on an ongoing basis. The next is money. You know, certain size companies are not going to keep a, a financially investing into the greatest, newest thing, right? They have their team, their resources that they're you know, doing their diligence, setting up the systems, making sure they're hard and doing all that great stuff. And then what happens is when the new technology comes out or the next level, 
it's, you know, it's something they have to really kind of assess, evaluate, do a proof of concept, and then do a risk uh, portfolio and assessment to say, can we, if we get breached or ever get compromised, is there acceptable risk, right? Or do we have to, you know, financially invest to get that next level because we don't accept that risk, you know, or is there risk transference where they're actually saying, you know what, we won't accept that risk. We'll transfer it to an insurance company. You know, we'll do our due diligence, but if something happens, that insurance company will do a payout, you know, pay for our, our remediation for our team to come in or our outside, you know, solution, whatever that may be. And I think these are all kind of factors that we have to really kind of think about as we're doing holding companies accountable, but also looking at our, our technology and their solutions, our top down, bottom up approach, which is a really great, you know, strategy to look at our systems and our, our processes to make sure that our policies and procedure, our governance, all is in place from the top down. Management is working on, you know, cybersecurity awareness training, making sure our policies and procedures, make sure our instant response is there, our acceptable use policies are all up to date, right? Because when new technology and everything comes up, we have to make sure that these policies are up to date. And then making sure the technology is up to date, uh, patch management, hardened, tested, uh, on an ongoing basis and frequently. And it's, you know, it's just a hard challenge to, to kind of go through. So my opinion and just kind of going through it is that, and I think we have to work together, you know, of collaboration, communication. And that's why me, me doing these videos, going out and talking to people and, you know, uh, calling into companies and, and, you know, just sharing the new technologies, new things out there is really just my way of just helping, right? Providing value because I think it's so important right now is we need to collaborate. We need to work together because there's so much technology out there. There's so many different uh, cybersecurity solutions out there. We need to be able to collaborate and work together to be able to help, you know, people, companies, uh, subcontractors or, you know, our suppliers, you know, vendors, like all that stay secure. It's so important to kind of look at all those aspects, which I know a lot of people are doing it, but I want to put that out there just to kind of keep it front of mind. So that's it for today's video. I want to leave it at that. Just don't forget, uh, comment below, actually. i love to hear your feedback again with the uh, uh, original questions. And just don't forget, software is hackable. Being connected is vulnerable. I'll see you next video.